Welcome to Tech Talk. I'm your host, Nadira Nazir. My guest today is a very young politician, one of the youngest MPs that I know, and I have to say he's also my very first MP on the show. Ghana Genius was first elected in 2015 as the Member of Parliament for Sherwood Park, Fort Saskatchewan. He's a member of our opposition, the Conservative Party of Canada Caucus, and he served as Deputy Critique for Human Rights and Religious Freedom. Genius has developed a reputation and as one of the most outspoken parliamentarian. Many of Genius' speeches focus on international human rights and foreign affairs. He has been extremely active on these issues. Genius grew up in his Edmonton area constituency where his interest in international human rights was shaped by the influence of his maternal grandmother, a Holocaust survivor. Genius got involved in politics in order to try to make a difference. He contends that the world is rarely changed by those who choose to keep their opinion to themselves. Well said, Daya. Thank you. It's great to be with you today. Thank you and welcome to my show. Thank you. And I have, uh, as I mentioned earlier, you are my very first MP. Great. Yeah, it's, it's great to be here. I really appreciate what TAG TV does, and it's great to be with you for the first time. Uh, so tell me a little bit about why you chose to be in politics. Mm -hmm. Well, I, the, the best reason to be involved in politics is, is out of concern for the issues. Uh, the fact that the decisions government makes touch people's lives in so many different ways. Uh, at the provincial level, it's the schools you go to, it's the, the state of the health care system, uh, it's uh, the taxes you pay there at the national level, it's taxes, it's the voice Canada has in the world, uh, it's immigration and refugees, it's, it's our security. All these things that are, are really important for the well-being of, of uh, citizens here and people abroad are affected by politics. So uh, it's a lot of work, it's a lot of sacrifice involved in, in this journey, but it's worth the effort because politics matters a lot. Uh, and I think it's worth your, your viewers, your listeners uh, making the choice to become involved in whatever way they can uh, because, again, it's, it's important. So at what age did you start? Well, I, uh, I grew up in a political family. As you mentioned in the introduction, uh, my grandparents, my, my parents raised us to be politically aware, but it was particularly the experience of, of my grandparents uh, whose lives were touched significantly by politics. My grandfather was an engineer who was working in Alberta during the National Energy Program, so he was affected by uh, bad economic policy, uh, anti-energy, uh, anti-Alberta policy, of the last Trudeau government, and I would argue we're seeing some of that uh, mentality be repeated. Uh, my grandmother was a Holocaust survivor. She grew up as a child in Germany. She was part Jewish. She was affected by the Holocaust. Uh, she was never caught, but uh, she was separated from her family. She had to hide out. Many members of her family were killed. And, uh, and this shaped for me an understanding of, uh, of just how bad things can get when politics uh, goes in the wrong direction mm -hmm. and also the importance of our response to human rights abuses else, elsewhere. Um, I, I, I think about my grandmother when I see abuses of human rights other places, be it the, the situation in China right now with mm -hmm. various minorities, Uyghurs, Christians, Falun Gong practitioners and others, uh, the situation of the Rohingya in Burma, uh, many of these issues that I've spoken out about, uh, the the, the, the response that I have is, is connected to that personal understanding and connection through my grandmother with the same kind of experience. After the Holocaust, uh, the world said, never again, never again can we let this happen. And yet, uh, we do see the same kinds of, of uh, ab abuses, uh, dehumanization, genocide, repeating themselves in various parts of the world. And, and that, I think, requires our engagement to try and and bring forward greater justice and human human rights, respect for human dignity. And, and what are those initiatives that's being taken by uh, by yourself or, or things platform that you're looking at doing for educations of human rights and freedom? Well, uh, the tools that I have as a member of parliament, especially as a member of the, of the opposition, right now it's to it's to speak, it's to give speeches, it's to uh, to, to to try and pressure our government to do more. Uh, but also to speak to uh, to young people. I, I'm here in Toronto and I visited three different universities in the last couple of days speaking about foreign affairs and international human rights issues. Uh, so try to trying to raise the the tenor of the conversation ar around this. Uh, also as, as an MP I have the opportunity to engage in some direct diplomacy as well. So 
I, from time to time, will write letters to other governments, we'll meet with ambassadors, we'll travel to other places to, to highlight these issues. Um, so these are some of the other things that, that I'm able to do in my role to bring more attention. And uh, hopefully, uh, if, if our party, the Conservative Party, has an opportunity to be in government after the next election, uh, then we'll be able to do a little more directly with with the government of Canada itself to put these issues on the global agenda uh, and to more effectively target things like uh, foreign aid and, and uh, our spending on foreign affairs into those things that are going to advance democracy, freedom and human rights. So you mentioned you visited some university and talking about the human rights and freedom. Do you think the same conversation is taking, taking place in uh, high schools, I think? Personally, I think those conversations should start at a very young age just to make people aware of it and be mm -hmm. active, right? And I know we have, there's an issue, and maybe I don't know what percentage of it people are aware of it and actively doing something. Do you think in high school there needs to be a better awareness of human rights issues and freedom so that those youth can actually participate in some of that solutioning? Yeah, you know, I don't know that I could, I could comment too uh, intelligently on yeah. the current state of, of awareness in high schools. The, the young people that I've engaged with, uh, I think, uh, are, are quite interested in these issues and, and are always interested in, in learning more. Um, I, I think the issue, and, and I count myself in this category, I'm a relatively young person, I'm 32, uh, that sometimes uh, there's a certain youthful impatience where we hear about these things, we want to do something, we want to take action, uh, and then there's a certain frustration that sets in because you realize uh, fighting back against injustice I is a matter of long-term sustained pressure, and the fight is never really over. Uh, as much as we, we, we say never again, and, and we want to, to, to get to a point where never again do genocides, dehumanization, and these sorts of things happen, um, you know, I think, I think we recognize that 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 getting there requires continuous effort and engagement and there's no there's no switch there's no button you can push so uh for for young people it's it's getting that level of awareness but also uh, encouraging them to to make a sustained long-term commitment to human rights advocacy and to looking for the most effective way to do it uh not to become uh, discouraged or demoralized uh, just because uh, you weren't able to to achieve what you wanted in a in a short period of time or or get the result you wanted right away. And nowadays communication is better with social media, right? Yeah. You can create that in a global platform and you can sustain it and motivate it as well too. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to take a quick break Great. and we're going to be right back with our MP Ghana Genius. Combine a love and passion for food with authentic Mediterranean flavors. Add a touch of warmth and relaxation, and you'll have the best dining experience at Alpha Wall Restaurant. Located in the heart of Mississauga at 2273 Dundas Street West. Bring your loved ones and reward your appetite to an exquisite halal prepared menu. Our secret ingredient is just a hinge of love. Each plate prepared with care, creating a universal piece of art. Make every bite a memorable moment with All For All Restaurant. Welcome back, everybody. We are here with MP Ghana G Genius for Sherwood Park for Saskatchewan. So let's talk about your, uh, your constituency. So yes. what can they expect to see in the upcoming few months in the summer? Uh, well, so our riding, just to kind of situate it first, we're just east of Edmonton in Alberta. People hear the name often and think it's in Saskatchewan, but the North Saskatchewan River goes through Manitoba, Saskatchewan, and Alberta. So Fort Saskatchewan is right on the river. That's where the name comes from. And we're a, uh, a beautiful suburban family type of community. So uh, it's, a, it's a great place to raise a family. Uh, there's a lot of different kind of fun activities. It's, it's not kind of a, it's not the kind of place where, uh, you know, there, there's, uh, the, there's no massive summer festival or something, uh, but there's a lot of kind of fun family oriented activities that happen. And it's a, it's a really great kind of safe, uh, fun, uh, community oriented place to live. So it's, it's where I grew up and it's where I'm raising my family and hopefully it's where my kids will do the same. Uh, can they look forward to any uh, summer activities that uh, your writing is doing? 
Uh, Your office is putting any barbecue coming up? Well, yeah, we're 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 putting together in some some different programs for for June. Normally, we would have uh, kind of a spate of activities in early September, uh, but this time we're kind of moving those to the end of June because we're into into election season. So. Uh, my kids are excited about doing a lot of door knocking with me and uh, and getting ready for that October vote. And how how young are they? So I, I want to know, like, how young can you start training them on door knocking? Yes, well, so so I've got three right now. I've got a daughter who's one, a daughter who's six, and then a son who's three and a half. So uh, usually I think, I think most people would see this, that kids are, at that age, are very interested in whatever their parents are doing. And uh, so my daughter is uh, fascinated by politics and she uh, she wants to to be part of the campaign. She loves to come out door knocking with me, and uh, she she really listens and absorbs and, and gets a kind of an understanding of how the process works. So, uh, look forward to hopefully spending a bit more time with her as part of that. Last time I ran, she was only two years old, so less engaged. This time it'll be a bit uh, a bit more of a of a family process. And you now have a dedicated <coughs> volunteers that you can bring around. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I have to say, though, I actually personally experienced it at the last event that I was there. He, Gunnett, you were giving a speech, and then your son came up towards the stage. And once you finished your speech, he was actually clapping for oh, yeah. you. <laughs> yes. Well, I hope he's clapping <laughs> for me. Right? That's, that's certainly if it, And he was me. intently listening to you, yeah. and then he was just standing there, not interrupting, just on the side. Yeah. You had the, the, the platform, and then he was just clapping, yeah. really happy to see you Great. and to hear your speech. Thank you. Well, well uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, being a dad is the most important thing I do. And, uh, you know, I love my work, love my family. So when I can have them together in the same place by bringing my kids out to campaign events or, uh, or to participate in, in things that I'm doing, it's, uh, it's always special to be able to bring those two worlds together. Okay. And I want the viewers to get to know the lighter side of Garnet. So I'm going to ask you a bunch of Okay. Friendly questions for people to get to know you. So we okay. start with some easy one. What's your favorite color? Blue, I have to say, I guess. <laughs> eh? What kind of blue? There's so many variations of blue. Oh, whatever. It can, can Is it the blue that you're wearing today? Con conservative blue. But no, I don't. I don't <laughs> you know, I mean, that's something I give a lot of thought to, I guess. But, uh, but uh, you know, the, 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 the color grows on you after you see your name on signs with it <laughs> yes, for, uh, yes. for quite a bit. So, uh, What's your favorite meal? Uh, so... I mentioned my grandmother. Uh, she used to make something called spetsla, uh, which is uh, it's kind of a, a doughy. It's kind of maybe it, it looks like pasta, but it's but it's got a it, it's it, it's hard to, it's hard to describe. Okay. But but uh, but it's fantastic. And uh, so for my for my my wife is uh, her, her parents are both born in Pakistan, and I love spicy curry as well. So uh, she. Uh, made me spetsla with uh, with spicy Indian curry. So to me, that was like the perfect meal, cultural fusion. You have uh, South Asian flavor with the the German spetsla. You know, my wife's cooking combined with my grandmother's cooking doesn't get any better. I need to Google spetsla. I don't think I've ever heard yeah. about that. Okay. I'm going to look that up. You know what? You should, and it goes really well with with a good uh, with a good spicy curry. Yeah, oh, nice, uh, nice. I don't know. I don't know if, if those worlds have ever been put together before, but it's it's a Canadian thing, right? We yes. we got all this cultural fusion going on, and and uh, and food is part of it. Maybe you just gave an inspiring chef a great idea here about this fusion, because I don't yeah. think that fusion has been done before. Yeah, you know, it's it's a uh, it's an untapped market. Yes. <laughs> Go for it. What's your favorite season? Um, <laughs> with the long winter that we yeah, have. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, uh, I like the warmer weather. Uh, you know, I, it's, maybe that's cliche, but, uh, but I, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, can, I can deal with the winter, but, uh, but summer's better. What's your favorite movie? Uh, Bridge of Spies. Um, Bridge of Spies, recent, recent, relatively recent movie, uh, and uh, it's about a uh, it's about a lawyer in the U.S. Kind of the first part of it, he's he's representing uh, a Soviet spy, and uh, the, the the theme kind of running through that part of the film is is his insistence on the integrity of the legal process. Uh, I mean, in, 
he, he's kind of a, a, a Judy Wilson Raybould type <laughs> of figure in a way, <laughs> yeah. right? To relate it to something going on politically now, because there's all these people that are that are saying to him, "Oh, come on, you know, we gotta. Uh, this guy's a spy. We gotta, we gotta lock him up." And and he says, "You know, what makes us different from the Soviets is our commitment to the rule book and the process." And I'm going to give this guy a good legal defense. So that's the first part of it. And then uh, after after the, his client is convicted, but he manages to to get uh, get him off the death penalty, so he's in prison. Uh, he's the, the same lawyer is asked to negotiate a prisoner exchange with the Soviets. So then he goes to East Berlin, and uh, uh, the 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 strength of character that this person shows, while not being particularly showy or flamboyant, is I think really uh, really inspiring. And there's a there's a lot of uh, of depth and drama to the movie. Uh, and so someone with integrity, something that we really need. Yeah. Right. Especially with what's going on right now and yes. what's been happening right now. Yeah. Um, what's your favorite vacation spot? Um, so, uh, this coming week, I'm actually going going back to Dharamsala in India. Uh, I uh, I love going to India, and uh, Dharamsala is the headquarters of the Tibetan government in exile. So, uh, the last time I was there, I had a chance to meet the Dalai Lama, and I'm uh, going back and and going to be meeting uh, as part of an audience with him again. Uh, so. Uh, yeah, there's so many different parts of the world that I that I love, but uh, but if, but uh, I, the last time I was asked that question, I said Dharamsala, and it's probably probably still the case, or at least pretty close to the top of the list. Uh, both of the times I've gone there, it's been sort of a combination of of getting away, but also working. But, uh, but you know, to me, that's a that's a, a neat vacation just to go somewhere, kind of cross cultural experience, but also get to meet with with local leaders and talk about uh, what's going on. Uh, Dharamsala, you, you kind of have this this fusion of Tibetan and uh, and Indian culture, and uh, you know it's, it's beautiful views up from from up on the mountain and uh, all kinds of you know monkeys and other animals walking around. So it's a neat neat place to go. Because I was going to ask you, are you a mountain person or ocean? It sounds like you may be mountain, or do you uh, prefer? I lo love the ocean too. <laughs> uh, so my, my my wife's parents were born in Pakistan, but their origin is is from Goa. So um, I guess not this trip, but hopefully the next time I go to India, I'll be able to visit Goa. And I hear uh, there's there's uh, great beaches there. And I've got a couple siblings on the on the west coast of Canada, uh, two in Vancouver, one in Victoria, and uh, love visiting them uh, and and being in the ocean as well. What's your favorite sports? Um. <laughs> so I. I, I don't play a lot of sports right now. I mean, uh, I uh, or watching, yeah, or, or watch sports. Um, I mean, I uh, I like watching the odd hockey game, like uh, like probably a lot of people uh, in Canada. Um, it's not a big part of my life, though. But I do know that you are a very uh, intense, um, serious player of snake and ladders. Yes, yes, I mentioned that in my bio. Yeah, um, I, I like to play, you know, board games with my kids. Something I grew up with, and something I'm passing along to them. And I, I think it's, uh, well, I, well, I tell myself it's good for their their intellectual development to learn how to how to. Um, I mean, Snakes and Ladders is fun, but also we, we play somewhat more complex strategy games with them. And, and I enjoy them, but I, th I hope it's contributing to their education as well. What's your favorite board game? Um, so... Uh, so much to choose from. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which one yeah, do you yeah. typically play so, mostly with the kids so when I, you have time? Well, okay, so I'll, I'll mention too, with, with, with my daughter, I, we, we play this uh, deck building card game called Dominion. And uh, so, sh so she's six. The box says 14 and up. And, uh, you know, she can't even read what all the cards say at this point because complex words. But, but she's kind of memorized what, what each card does. So it's fun playing that with her. And, and she, she's really great at figuring out the strategies. Um, some people may be familiar with a kind of a classic board game called Diplomacy, which is a yeah. which is a strategy board game that's based on World War One, and it involves uh, not only the strategy of the board, but kind of making and breaking alliances. And uh, I was uh, recently kind of in a, an online version of this game with uh, with a few other uh, fairly prominent politicians. I won't name them. I don't know if <laughs> I don't know if I'm supposed to or not. But playing diplomacy with uh, with a number of my colleagues and uh, and a couple parliamentarians in other countries over the internet was a uh, was a fun experience. And uh, I didn't win, but uh, 
uh, but I made a good showing. Excellent. So, yeah. is there, this is your camera. Is there anything else you want people from your constituency to learn about you or across Canada? Well, uh, I, I think we've covered, a, <laughs> oh. we've covered a lot of things. Certainly, uh, certainly families, uh, families up there for me uh, as, a, as a priority and trying to figure out how to, how to balance being a good MP, being a good dad, and, and combining those things is, is uh, uh, kind of means that there's, there's not a lot of time in between. But, but uh, I try and be an active reader as well uh, when I... Uh, you know, when when I have am, am always expressing my opinion and and putting ideas out there, I feel it's also important to be pouring new ideas in by by reading uh, not just you know articles, but also uh, delving deeper by by reading books. And usually, I have sort of five or six books on the go because you know I I kind of want to be reading a book about one topic, book about another, so that if I whatever I feel like reading about on a given day, I kind of switch back and forth between what I'm reading. So. And, and I'm with you there because that's the continuous growth comes from that, yeah. right? Because it's a different way of just looking at something or maybe refreshment, uh, refreshing of what you already know or different yeah. positioning of certain uh, aspect of uh, philosophy or ideas or strategies. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Gone, it was a pleasure. Thank you. Having you here and getting to know you. Um, all the success for the Conservative Party for the upcoming election on October 21st. Thank you. And um, I look forward to seeing you again. Yes. And I want to thank my sponsors, uh, Susie Tomasi at susiequewels.com. And a portion of our proceeds goes to the Women's Shelter. And my wonderful makeup artist, Mindy Baji. Please follow me on Instagram and subscribe to TAC TV. Thank you for joining us today. Stay positive and start believing.